All right, today we're going to talk about resonances in air columns, all right? Last time we talked about resonances in strings, like a guitar string or a violin string. Um, now we're going to talk about what happens when the air itself is resonating. For example, if I have a trombone, right? What forms the resonances in the trombone? It's not the brass it's made of. It's not the brass that's resonating. It's the air inside the tubes. In an organ pipe, it's the air that oscillates. So what happens when we have resonances in air columns? To review, last time we determined that the frequencies you hear from a guitar or a violin depend on the string. You generate a standing wave in the string. There's different frequencies that the, of standing waves you can make on that string. The fundamental or first harmonic resonance determines the pitch. So when you play a guitar string, you hear all these different frequencies, all these different harmonics. Your ear picks out the lowest frequency one, the fundamental, and it says, that's the note I'm playing. That's a middle C or an A above middle C. The other harmonics determine the quality of the sound, what the, the, the tone of the sound. It, what, it's what makes a violin sound different from a guitar, which sounds different from a piano, all right? Which sounds different from a trumpet, which we're going to talk about today. So it's the, the properties of the string that determine those frequencies. I have a colleague who sometimes will put a guitar inside of a plastic bag and fill the bag with helium and ask students what's going to happen to the frequencies of the sounds. And students think the guitar is going to sound higher because helium, right? Waves travel faster in helium, so you get higher resonances. No, that's not what happens. The frequencies of the resonances are determined by the string. The resonances on the string. So you put helium around your guitar, it plays the same pitches. How is air involved at all? Well, you need air to get the vibrations of the string to your ear. So the string moves back and forth. It moves the air. It pushes the air around and makes a disturbance in the air, which travels as a sound wave to your ear. OK, honestly, to tell the truth, guitar strings and violin strings are very thin. They don't move a lot of air. So in order to hear the sound well, what we do is we couple the string to the body of the guitar. So the string goes over a bridge, the bridge transfers the oscillations to the body, and the body couples the oscillations to the air. So the purpose of the body of a guitar or a violin, besides making it easier to hold, is that it's a bigger surface that vibrates and moves a lot of air. All right, But the resonances, the pitches that are played, depend on the string, not on the air. However, when we talk about a clarinet, or a trumpet, or a trombone, or an organ pipe, what's actually resonating there is the air. And the properties of the air will affect what frequencies, what notes are played. So imagine, if you will, th these are the walls of a pipe. All right. So let's imagine I have this pipe, and I want to see what frequencies the air in this pipe will resonate at. Now first of all, we're going to assume a one-dimensional pipe. Um, we're going to assume that the diameter of our pipe is small compared to the length, so that we can kind of treat it like a one-dimensional oscillator. All right? And when we do that, it turns out there's two different things we can think of. We can think in terms of the pressure oscillation or the displacement oscillation. Right? Because as the air wiggles back and forth, wiggle, 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 all right? We can think in terms of how far is this little packet of air displaced from equilibrium as it you know, wiggles in time. But we can also think in terms of how does the pressure go up and down as that wiggling happens. All right? For a pipe that's open at both ends, I find it easier to think in terms of the pressure oscillations because I know at the end of the pipe, the pressure is not going to change, right? It's atmospheric pressure outside of the pipe, and you'd have to displace a lot of air into the room to change the pressure of the air in the room significantly, right? Your trumpet, your organ pipe has very little air compared to all of the surrounding air. So it just, the oscillations can't change atmospheric pressure outside of the pipe. So at the edge of the pipe, we're going to assume that the pressure doesn't change. In other words, we have a pressure node at the edge of the pipe, at the ends. This looks a lot like a guitar string, right? And we go, oh, the first harmonic is the longest this is the standing wave with the longest possible wavelength such that we have nodes at the end of the pipe. All right? And we come along and we say, ah, the wavelength of the first harmonic is just 2L, just like in a guitar string, because the longest wavelength 
you know, if I have a wavelength of 2L, that will put my nodes half a wavelength apart, L apart, and that's the longest, longest wavelength standing wave that fits the boundary conditions of my pipe. All right? I can also think in terms of displacement, though. It turns out at the ends, it's really easy for the air to move back and forth, so we get actually a displacement antinode at the edges. And in the middle, we actually get a displacement node, right? The air is moving um, in from both sides. We have a pressure antinode because stuff's coming from both sides and squishing in the air at the middle, making the pressure go high. But at the same time, since it's being squished from both sides, it can't go anywhere. And we actually end up with a displacement node at the center of our pipe. So I can also think in terms of the displacement. All right, so this is the same wave. I'm just plotting two different aspects of it. Here I'm plotting change in pressure. Here I'm plotting displacement. All right, and in a standing wave in air, <coughs> wherever I have a, a pressure antinode, I have a displacement node. Wherever I have a pressure node, I have a displacement antinode. All right, the wavelength of the first harmonic here, in this picture, it's the same thing. It's the same wave. It has the same wavelength. I've just swapped nodes and antinodes. The second harmonic, right, in pressure, I have nodes out here. I'll have one more node in the middle. The second harmonic will look like this, all right? And the wavelength of the second harmonic is just L. And just like with the guitar string, we can go through, keep adding more and more nodes, and we'll find that in general, the wavelength of the nth harmonic is 2N over L. The frequency of the nth harmonic is N V over 2L or N times the frequency of the first harmonic. All right? So exactly what we saw with the guitar string, only now, what's the difference? The velocity is now the velocity of the sound in the uh, velocity of sound in the air that's filling your tube, whereas with the guitar or violin, it was the velocity of waves on your string. Okay? Now, we're going to move on to what happens when I have a pipe that's closed at both ends. All right, if I have a pipe that's closed at both ends, now the air can't move at the ends, right? Air comes along, pushes on this little piece of air. It's got nowhere to go. It's stuck at the end. So it turns out if I have a pipe that's closed at both ends, I have a displacement node at either side. All right, so now if I think in terms of displacement first, I have displacement nodes at either side, and my first harmonic has a wavelength of 2L, just as before. If I add another mode to the sander, I can get a, whoop, I missed that node. I can get a standing wave that has a wavelength of L. And if I add two nodes to the middle, I can get a wave that looks like this, right, where the wavelength is 2L over 3. Just as before, we're finding that our wavelengths, the wavelength of my nth harmonic is 2L over N. The frequencies of my harmonics are just NV over 2L, or N times the frequency of the first harmonic. So we get exactly the same wavelengths, exactly the same frequencies as we did with a pipe that's open at both ends. The only difference now is, now instead of displacement antinodes, I have nodes at the ends. Likewise with pressure, all right, if I have closed ends, as the air slams into the sides, you get really big pressure variations. So now we get pressure antinodes. In the middle, I'm going to get a pressure node, all right? And my first harmonic looks like this if I plot the oscillation in pressure, all right? So a pipe open at both ends has the same wavelengths and frequencies for its harmonics as a pipe closed at both ends, but my plots of pressure and displacement swap, okay? So for a pipe open at both ends, I have pressure nodes at the ends. For a pipe closed at both ends, I have displacement nodes at the ends, okay? Now, what happens if I have a pipe that's closed at one end and open at the other? Well, should we think in terms of pressure or displacement? Either way. Let's think first in terms of displacement. I have a displacement node at the end. The air can't move. The end has it capped. But it's really easy for the air to move at this end because it's open, so I'm going to have a displacement antinode. All right? If I think in terms of pressure, all right, I'm going to have a pressure node over here. It's just atmospheric pressure all the time. 
but I'm going to have an antinode over here where stuff slams into the wall and makes a big pressure. So my first harmonic on a pipe that's open at one end, closed at the other, looks like this. What's the wavelength of my first harmonic? Well, it's if I go from one node to another node, that's half a wavelength, right? If I go from a node to an antinode, that's only a fourth of a wavelength. All right, so our pipe is only one fourth of the wavelength, which means the wavelength is four times the length of the pipe. All right? <coughs> now, what happens if I add, so if I, let's say, let's take our displacement plot here. What if I add one more node? All right, then I get a standing wave that looks like this. All right, and I have one, two, three quarters of a wavelength. Right, so the next harmonic has a wavelength of, it's going to have a, a wavelength, we fit four quarters, let's see, three quarters of a wavelength in, so it's going to be 4L over 3. All right? So the fundamental has a wavelength of 4L, the next harmonic is three times smaller. Now that's different from what we had in a pipe that's open at both ends or closed at both ends, where the next harmonic was had a wavelength which was half of the fundamental. It's almost as if we skipped the second harmonic and went right to the third harmonic. So that's what we're going to do. Just by convention, we label the next harmonic the third harmonic because it's got a wavelength which is three times smaller than the first harmonic. What's the frequency of the nth harmonic? Well, the frequency, once again, it's V over lambda, which turns out to be then NV or sorry, NV over 4L, all right? Okay, so the frequency of the third harmonic is gonna be three times the frequency of the first harmonic. But notice we had no second harmonic. We found the first harmonic, we went to the next, the next wavelength, the next harmonic, and we found it had a wavelength three times smaller, and we labeled that N equals three. There was no N equals two harmonic, all right? The fifth harmonic, guess what? It has a wavelength of 4L over 5, and so forth. So just as before, the nth harmonic has a wavelength of the first harmonic over N, all right? And the frequency is N times the frequency of the first harmonic. But for a pipe which is closed at one end, open at the other, it differs from the other two cases, the open pipe and the closed pipe, in that the wavelength of the first harmonic is 4L instead of 2L, which means the frequency of the first harmonic is V over 4L instead of V over 2L. So the fundamental frequency, for if I have two pipes that are the same length and one of them is closed at both ends and one is open at one end, closed at the other, the one that's open at one end, closed at the other will have a fundamental frequency which is half the fundamental frequency of the pipe that's closed at both ends or of a pipe that's open at both ends. So one difference when I have closed on one end, open at the other, is that compared to the other two cases, the fundamental frequency will be half. It'll be an octave lower, all right? The other difference is I only get odd harmonics. I don't get even harmonics, all right? Okay, so that's what I get when I have a pipe that's open at one end, closed at the other. I encourage you to go and watch a video at this website. Um, a professor at, uh, made these videos where he took a flute and a clarinet and he swapped their mouthpieces and played around with them. And you find out something really interesting. Because the flute, the flute is open at one end and then at the end you blow it's got a big hole so it's open there. So you have pressure antinodes, or sorry, pressure nodes at both ends of a flute. But a clarinet, it's open at the bell end, but the mouthpiece, you've got this reed with just a very tiny opening and it behaves like a closed end. So with a clarinet, you have a pressure node at the bell, but you have an antinode at the mouthpiece, all right? So the first harmonic on a clarinet looks like this, but on a flute, it looks like this. So if you have a flute and a clarinet that are about the same length, it turns out when you play the clarinet, you hear a tone, which is an octave lower, because the fundamental frequency is, it's, uh, the fundamental frequency is a factor of two lower in frequency. All right?